This will be the only video that you should ever need to watch on incrementality tests. We'll start at the most simplistic level of how a geolift test works and why you would want to run one, and then we'll step stone up into the complexities of how these experiments actually operate within Google and Facebook ads native tools, as well as third-party SaaS solutions. Starting off at the absolute basics, the reason why you would want to run a geo test is because if you increase advertising spend by $2,000, and you see a $10,000 increase on top line revenue, you would go and assume that your incremental return was a five. For every dollar that you put in, you saw five more dollars in top line revenue. However, that assumes that every single variable is constant, which is not the case. There are thousands of variables changing every single minute. And so to control for variables to get a more thorough understanding of whether that 2K in spend was the actual primary driver of why revenue increased by 10K, you can split up your targeting into control groups and test groups. And you can do this at a geographic level. And so instead of increasing your budget of the entire country, you can take one specific state and just increase the budget of that state and see what happens to the revenue of that particular state. And then look at the other control state or the entire country and look at how revenue changed there in the same time period. Take the variance out of the test state and then see what the actual incremental lift was. If that's a little bit confusing, we're gonna dive into an actual example in a second. Now, why should you actually even care about this? Well, number one, if you want to measure incremental returns as you're scaling up, geo lifts are one of the best ways to do it. Um, but why should you take care about the more intricate details? Why don't you just stop watching the video here and not learn about how these tech platforms are actually applying this? Because there's multiple disadvantages of running a geo lift test in its most simplistic form. Number one is heterogeneous geos, which means that in different states, you have different demographics. So there's different sizes of population, there's different behaviors, and they're also gonna respond differently to ads. And so this variability makes it difficult to actually get accurate results. Number two is outliers. If an outlier occurs like a local event, it could skew all of the results. And then number three is budget constraints. Ad spend distribution is not even at a geographic level. And so that just introduces additional complexity into be out, being able to pinpoint exactly what the true effect is and impact of an incremental lift in ad spend. Now, what I'm about to go through is a reference into a paper that Google put out back in 2021, which was called Robust Causal Inference for Incremental Return on Ad Spend with Randomized Paired Geo Experiments. I recommend going and actually reading through this document if you want further details on what I'm about to run through. Now, all of the platforms use a derivative of this theory and this practice. And so whether you're using an in-platform geo-lift experiment within Google, which you can only get access to if you have very large ad spends and a Google Met Meta rep actually allows you to use it, the same applies for Meta, except Meta, it's actually natively available in platform. You just have to have a lot of conversion turnover volume. And then you also have third-party tools that are implementing geo-lift tests as well. Um, however, you need to generally be an eight-figure brand in revenue to be able to leverage the MMM models and incremental lift studies within here. So let's run to an actual example. Let's say you have South Australia, which has $10,000 in monthly revenue on average, and is on average spending 2K a month. You then have Victoria, which has 20K in revenue with 4K in spend per month. And we want to run a test to determine if we put more spend into Google Shopping, what is the incremental lift on revenue when we do so? And so what we decide to do is let's just put $1,000 into South Australia and see what happens to the South Australia revenue figure. And so we run it for a month. And after a month's time, we see that the new monthly revenue, or you can even look at this as daily revenue, it really doesn't matter, um, is now 12,000 in revenue with 3K spend. And so we saw a lift here of 2K in rev, which comes out to about 20%, or well, comes out to exactly 20%. And then in Victoria, we did nothing to Victoria. We kept everything the same. This was the control group, but revenue still went up. Revenue went up by $1,000 and 5%. And this is the whole reason as to why geo lift experiments work. Because if you were to just increase the budget of the entire country and you didn't have a control group, you would have thought that all of the spend increase caused all of the revenue, but it didn't. The macro environment just improved. 
And so we need to then look at this improvement and back it out of our figures here. And so that's where we make a variance adjustment. We look at this and we go, okay, South Australia would have improved by 5% anyway. And so let's remove that 5% gain and just look at the incremental gain that we think is because of the spend. And so we adjust this to just a 1.5K gain rather than a 2K gain, which is a 15% lift. And so our incremental ROAS here is 1.5K in new revenue divided by 1K in spend. And so our I ROAS that would be reported to us from an in-platform tool on Facebook or Google or a third-party tool would be a 1.5. So we could determine that for every $1 we put in to Google Shopping, we are going to get $1.50 in top-line revenue. Now, these tests also translate in the opposite direction. And so an incremental test that you could run is turning off brand search. A lot of people are of the similar opinion that brand search is essentially a tax on the internet. If you run a brand, you now have to give a certain percentage to Google just to protect your own brand name. A lot of people don't want to do it. And arguably, there's no incremental lift here from actually even running brand. And so this is a test that's absolutely definitely worth running. And so what you could do is remove brand search from South Australia. You would then be able to reduce spend theoretically, but you would want to measure if it has an impact on revenue. And so once again, you do a pre-test average, you then look at the post-test average, and you can see there was a drop in South Australia, but there was also a drop in Victoria. And so once again, you would look at how much of a drop there was here, you would apply that to the variance, and then you would try to measure what the actual drop was caused by this change. Now, how does this start to step stone up in complexity? Well, the paper that I referenced earlier went into a new methodology behind finding that correlation between the control and the adjustment, which is called trimmed match estimator. Now, how this actually works is number one, you pair two geos and you pair two geos uh, very strategically based on historical characteristics and past performance. So we wanna choose two geographics that respond very similar to ads they respond very similar to budget changes, and they also have very similar seasonality on both a day, weekly, and yearly level. From there, we want to go and calculate the residuals. And so we're going to make an estimate on what we believe the correlation is between increasing ad spend and revenue. And then we want to go and actually measure it during the test period and plot all of the residuals, which is the difference between the expected value and the actual value. And we then want to remove any of the large residuals. So any outlier, anything that's going to skew the data or cloudy up the data, we want to get rid of it. And so we're essentially trimming up the data around the predicted model. And we're then going to recalculate the incremental row as based on that trimmed data set. And so how that actually relates into the examples that we were going through further is that when I say that Revenue increased here by $1,000, which was 5%. So let's go and just adjust for that in the control. And then that's our incremental ROAS. That is one enormous assumption. Assuming that this 0.5% lift occurred in the entire of the Australian geo, had nothing to do with the test that was in South Australia, and that all variables are being remained constant between these two demographics and geos, is guaranteed to be not true. Guaranteed. And so what we then want to do is reduce the statistical variance here as much as possible and reduce the error bars. We want this iROAS to be as accurate as possible because right now this estimate just isn't true. There's a huge error bar here. And that if we start going and layering in extra dollars into advertising, we really can't guarantee that we're going to get a 1.5 incremental ROAS because of how much error there is in this adjustment. And so where the value starts to be introduced by these third-party platforms and these third-party SaaS solutions that are trying to accurately predict what your incremental ROAS actually is and why Google and Facebook is constantly iterating and they have entire teams working on geolift experiments is because they're trying to build more accurate models that can determine how the adjustment should be made here. How much should we be adjusting this 2K revenue by? What variables should we be tracking to be able to make more accurate and better adjustments here. And so this is really the crux of incrementality. Measuring iROAS is impossible. To measure an actual accurate incremental ROAS requires for you to have zero error bars on your adjustment from the control sample size to the actual test sample size, which 
in an environment like marketing, where there's thousands of different variables that are changing every single second, it's almost impossible to do. So there's always going to be an error bar on incremental ROAS. The value becomes in minimizing that error bar as much as possible so that you can get accuracy in what your incremental returns are so that you can be confident that you can go into the Google platform and use the shopping product or you can go into Facebook and use the Advantage Plus product and deploy more capital there and see an incremental return on top line revenue within the business.